first and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakal Kwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of his only begotten Son, and there is no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who definitely rule well and honors the citations to the hopeful elect. So, <clears throat> I just want to get into how, you know, is this, do you call this a righteous reign or a righteous rulership? Okay, I'm talking about here in Babylon the Great, which is America. Would you call this place a righteous rulership? Because this place definitely runs the planet Earth right now. And who runs this place? Ultimately, the so-called white man. These are the elites of the so-called white man. The elite banking families. Ultimately, they're in charge right now of the planet Earth. And I'll get that preset. That's why the, the that petrol dollar is a tall tale sign. Okay, the dollar is the most coveted currency and because of that it keeps them in power okay um in order to get oil out there from uh, OPEC you have to so like is got this asshole tailgating me but um anyhow you have to uh exchange your money into u.s dollars but your your currency may be nowhere near the level of a u.s dollar it may take five of your it may take five of your uh currencies to equal just one u.s dollar right so now you're uplifting and you're helping the dollar flourish and then now on top of that when you exchange your uh, currency into the US dollar these 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 Arabic countries the US dollar is worth more than than their than like in Saudi Arabia they call it the real it's pretty much four reals is worth one dollar so now when you give them all these dollars say you give them a thousand dollars and they exchange it back into their reals they just got uh pretty much a four thousand dollar profit a four thousand dollar profit man because you bought us dollars so this just an, that's just another tall tale sign of Who's in power here? Now, whose face is on the dollar? Okay, the so-called white man's. And also, the ruling language is, is uh, English. You got a lot of, you know, Slocky for the long intro. You got a lot of uh, countries, a lot of even Arabic countries, who now they're, they're teaching you English in elementary school as part of the curriculum. Not a uh, selective, I believe, you, they, an elective, I believe they call it, where you get to pick certain classes that you want. You could pick Spanish, or you could pick arts and this or whatever, whatever. No, it's, it's literally part of the curriculum. So why are they so coveted to, to want to learn English? Because they know that this is the place that's on top, man. So just when it went into that to, to, to go to show who's in power, <clears throat> well, the scripture is going to say it anyway. As well, Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. See? So then when you look around and see who, who would it be that's ruling the planet earth, you see that it's these elite banking families of, the, uh, of these so-called white people, man. Which are Edomites. It says he covers the faces of the judges thereof. He's also the one that covers the faces of the judges. He covered the face of the most high power. Okay, what's that in that painting where the Most High 
his finger is touching. I think it's supposed to be King David. So he covered the, the face of King David, whitewashed him. He whitewashed the Most High. He whitewashed his only begotten son. We were only called Jesus Christ. He whitewashed the angels. He whitewashed the, 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 the Israelites, the ancient Israelites. When you see them in the, uh, um, when you see them like when we, when we cross the Red Sea during those ancient times, when they make TV shows of it. Okay, so he, he whitewashed the judges thereof. He says, if not, where and who is he? So come on, man. It's a total tell sign, man, that this guy is the wicked. Okay? So now with everything that's being ran, looking down, you know, looking up, so to speak, at, uh, at who's running this place, and then looking around at how this place is being ran, would you call this a righteous rulership? What determines a, a righteous rulership, man? Because in Second King, the Second King, well, the whole Book of Kings and Chronicles. Let me see. Which we all should be familiar, you know. We all should be familiar with this. But let me uh, search this up real quick. So lock here. Because here in 2 Kings. Yep, yeah, 2 Kings. Slock, bear with me. Yeah, here it was right here. Second Kings, the 24th chapter. Because in the book of Kings was, of course, what? About the kings of Israel. You had righteous kings and you had wicked kings. What was the determining factor of if a king was righteous or if a king was wicked? Like, what was the, deter what was the determining factor, man? So this is uh, 2 Kings chapter 24. I'll start at verse 1, read it through it very, very quick. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants the prophets surely at the commandment of the lord came this upon judah to remove them out of his sight for the sins of of manasseh according to all that he did so let's get just this just an example right scratching the surface verse four and also for the innocent blood that he shed for he filled jerusalem with innocent blood which the Lord would not pardon. All right. So we see that if you, if you shedding innocent blood, that's a part of you being under a wicked rulership. Because when, uh, uh, King Manessa is classified under having a wicked rulership. 2 Kings 21, Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Habzibah. And he did that which was evil on the side of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal. So we see that if you worship in all these different gods, you are classified as a wicked rulership. Now, what goes on here, Babylon the Great? What goes on here in Babylon the Great, man? The numerous, innumerable worship of numerous false gods, man. 
at the BET Awards they're doing um who's I think that's Baal worship that they be doing. Secret Baal worship. There's a lot of secret worship going going on, man, of different false ancient gods. And then you got the popular ones. Okay, from all these uh, um you know false Rs. See? So the same thing, the same one of the same, two of the same reasons that had Manessa, King Manessa classified as a wicked rulership goes on here in Babylon the Great. This place was built off of innocent blood, man. The so-called Native Americans, the tribe of Ghana, the tribe of Ruma was at peace with you damn devils, man. They were willing to share with you devils. They was willing to hook you up. But you wanted it all, man. And you shed their blood innocently. You gave them pestilences, man, smallpox. You set them up against one another, man. You gave them liquor and drugs. I mean, you gave them, yeah, probably drugs too, but I know you gave them liquor and uh, and guns, I meant to say. Okay? It says, and he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said in Jerusalem, when I put my name, and he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord, and he made his son pass through the fire. See, sacrifices, human sacrifice. That's what they do here. And observed times and use enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. And he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. See, so all these we have examples of wicked kings and righteous kings, man. The kings that followed after the Lord with all their heart and implemented the law, statutes, and commandments of the Bible, they were they're they're ultimately classified as righteous. That tore down these different false statues and stuff. They were classified as righteous, man. But these are the wicked kings that set up all these different false deities, man. Did sacrifices, human sacrifices, shedding innocent blood. They're classified as the wicked. And here in Babylon the Great, you would be under the same classification as the wicked. As a wicked king. Right? And now you're a heathen. So let me get a scripture real quick. So now my point is, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? So I want to take a real quick detour to get this scripture and then come back. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 22. Come on, man. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 22. Therefore, whereas thou dost chasten in us, thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. See, I just wanted to grab that point because I'm going to wrap this lesson up. You get punished a thousand times more. So let's see what happened. Once again, when a wicked king established a wicked uh, rulership, 2 Kings 24 and 1, in his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against them bands of the Chaldees, bands of the Syrians, bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants the prophets you see surely at the commandment of the lord came this upon judah to remove them out of his sight see so you you think that the lord just lets you rock rock in a in a wicked rulership you think the lord just let you rock out like that for all eternity no eventually he's going to remove you out of his sight man eventually he's going to catch up with you man so do you think this place going to be any different and I'm going to end it off with this. I think that's what. Please ask is 13. And 4. I'm going to take a guess. Please ask is 13 and 4. Yup. It says, if, no, 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 that's not it. Salaka, Salaka. You set over one that's profitable. I think that's 10, matter of fact. Yeah, 10 and 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And don't you forget it, bro. Don't you forget it, man. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. Not the hand of Esau. Like he would have you think. 
and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable see so if you are not profitable and you are um just uh, uh, uh spreading death and wickedness and evilness you are eventually going to be put up out of there man we see that from the wicked kings so uh, the same thing is coming here man this is a wicked rulership and the lord is going to get rid of it very soon man low will and this is edifying and with that i'm gonna say shalom